Recording in progress. The yeah, students also are online. You can start working on the remaining problems. Okay, and I'll be clearing your doubts whenever it comes. Yeah. See, those are online. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'm just keeping my screen share on. So, can someone please respond if you're able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So I'll tell you what we are supposed to do today is, see, today is going to be the last day I'm working on this chapter. So make sure you have all the doubts clarified. So complete the remaining uh, eight problems. After, once you're done with it, I want you to start with the examples. Okay, so start doing it, concentrate on it. Three minutes for each problem, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
So how is it going? The handwriting now. Those are online, any doubt? No, sir. No, okay. So here I got 22nd question is what? Oh, 
L M N A B C. So listen to this. This way, this problem is there. Twenty second one. Uh, we are discussing this concept for topic eight. Again, so if you see, there are third and fourth chapter particles, matrices, and determinants. Okay. So if you write something in this kind of a form. You call this kind of an arrangement as rows and columns. So it's something like most of you have read in the Excel. In Excel, how we have the horizontal ones which are called as rows, and the vertical ones which are called as columns, right? So these horizontals are called as rows. So how many rows are there? First row, second row, third row. How many columns are there? Three columns. So one, two, three. So you call this kind of an arrangement as a three cross three, but you need to understand the difference between a matrix and a determinant. If I write the same detail within this f of x, g of x, and h of x, if I call this as L, M, N, and if I call this as A, B, C, if you put these kind of extended brackets, right, you call this kind of an arrangement as a matrix. If the bend is not there, this part, if these bends are not there and you are writing in the form of modulus, it is not called as matrix, it is called as determinant. I hope you can understand this one. Right. So, mostly you would have known how to handle the determinants. Right. So, what you need to do is you need to write the first number as it is. Hide the corresponding row and the corresponding column. So then what will you be left out with? You will be left out with M N B C. So f of x into you write it as M N B C. You write determinant of M N B C. That's how you write it. Okay. You will start this with positive sign, this with negative sign, and again this with positive sign. You always keep altering the signs. Why this is happening is because of something called as two factors, which you will see determinants, but as of two except it, plus minus plus. Okay, so for f of x, you start with the s. Guys, right, those are all in are you able to understand? Yes, so sir. for f, f, f of x, we started with plus, and for g of x, we'll write a minus, and for h of x, it is a plus. So minus g of x into determinant of. So you need to hide the corresponding row and the corresponding column. So what will be left out? L N A C here plus H of X into corresponding row and corresponding column. So hide the corresponding row and the corresponding column. So you'll be left out with L M A B. Okay. So this is still Y. And remember one thing, M, N, A, B, C, so, so to put for that matter, L, M, N and A, B, C, everything are just numbers, they are constants. So when you solve this determinant, you will get a constant. When you solve this determinant, you will get a constant. And when you solve this determinant also, you will get a constant. So I'm not solving it. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to find dy by dx directly. So whenever you are dealing with dy by dx, where a constant is multiplied for a function, what will happen? You will write the constant as it is, but function will get differentiated. So it will be m n b c minus g dash of x into l n a c. 
plus h dash of x into l m a b. So if you observe, are you able to find any similarities between the first and second? I mean the second and third step. The determinant part of the two cross two matrix is a constant. What is the multiplication factor? Instead of f of x, it became f dash of x, then became g dash of x, then h dash of x. So the second step is obtained from first. So how can I write the first step as? Something similar to the first step itself, but what are the replacements I need to do? So f of x is replaced with f dash of x, g with g dash and h with h dash. And that's what is asked to prove. Here, let's see. Or at all. When you expand it, when you exp minus are in the minus are good. I'm going to In your minus other one, when you expand it, when you expand it, see simple ra, in the compressed form, in the expanded form. Okay. So in the compressed form, I know minus will become plus. No. How is that? How is that? So I'm not writing that step. You can make a note of it. Those are online. I hope you could understand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Please make a note of it. Fourteen. Shall I proceed, guys? Okay. So there is another question that was asked, which is the fourteenth one. So fourteen. What is the question? X into root of one plus y. Okay. Is equal to zero. What are we supposed to do? Dy by dx. How much is it? Minus one by one plus. That's it. Okay. So how to proceed? So you want to collect y terms on one side, x terms on other side. 
You want to square on both sides and push it, but can we do it without square also? It was lengthy. Wouldn't get it. Okay. So she's saying she took it to the other side and squared. That method you guys can try. If you have a doubt, you can reach out to her. Second, we'll try it without square. Okay. Not necessary. You need that's why I asked her how did you? She told I tried. I tried the first one, I failed, so I tried the second one. Okay. So how do we do this? You tell me. Maybe one thing, x into root of 1 plus y is equal to minus y into root of 1 plus x. See, her method, one place will get saved is because there is an implicit, it's looking like an implicit function. So you need to square on both the sides, collect the y terms separately and x terms separately, then you do it, you'll get the result faster. Okay. Maybe this will take some time. We'll try and see. Okay. I'm assuming that you tried in this method and didn't get it. That is why I'm trying in this way. Okay, so tell me how to do this. U into V. So first function into. So first into derivative of. See, I would say this is slightly lengthy only by looking at it, I'm able to see it. Reason being, Y is coming in the denominator also. If at all you want to, maybe you don't want to eliminate the square root and do it, right? I, one thing I would suggest is. Have x terms on one side, y terms on others. Maybe you can write in that. Okay. So maybe we can try x divided by root of 1 plus x is equal to negative of y divided by root of 1 plus y. Okay. So then what can we do? Maybe u by u. So root of 1 plus x into 1 minus x into 1 by 2 root of 1 plus x. Right? The whole divided by 1 plus x is equal to the minus sign I'm leaving it. So same thing is going to come except that it is going to be y. Root of 1 plus y into 1 minus y into 1 by 2 root of 1 plus y. So what else am I supposed to do? No one minute. There is a mistake. Here. Correct. Yeah. Root of 1 plus y into it is not 1. It is y dash. Right. So y into 1 by 2 root of 1 plus y into y dash, the whole divided by 1 plus y. Makes sense? So that I have y dash in one side. That's the reason I did it. So, yeah. so now tell me what can you do? If you take LCM, so you will have 2 into 1 plus x minus x the whole divided by 2 into 1 plus x the whole power 3 by 2. Goes are online. Am I clear with this step? Am I clear? Da? So 2 into root of 1 plus x into root of 1 plus x is 1 plus x minus this thing is x. The whole divided by this 2 root of 1 plus x will get multiplied with 1 plus x. So 2 into 1 plus x power half into 1 plus x is 1 plus x the whole power 3 by 2. Right. So this will be equal to y my, my minus y dash into what am I going to get? Similar treatment, except y dash. So 2 into 1 plus y minus y, the whole divided by 2 into 1 plus y, the whole power 3 by 2. So 2 and 2 are gone. This 2 and 2 are gone. Right. So 1 plus x minus x. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Don't cancel it. I'm sorry. So 2 and 2. So you have 2 plus x. You will have 2 plus 2x minus x. 
So two minus uh, two plus six, and here you have two plus five. Correct? Uh? Am I missing something? Okay. So I'll write that step again. Let's see if we can do any manipulation. Two into one plus six minus six, the whole divided by one plus six, the whole power three by two is equal to minus of same thing. Oh, two into one plus y minus y, the whole divided by one plus y, the whole power three by two. So what will you do? Two plus two x minus x is plus x, the whole divided by one plus x, the whole power three by two, and you have a y dash. Right, is equal to negative of y dash into 2 plus y the whole divided by 1 plus y the whole power 3 by 2. Right, is there something that we can do with this? What is that they ask? They are told that y dash is equal to negative of 1 by 1 plus x the whole square. Right, if at all you follow this kind of one side of the basis, you need to eliminate how you do it. From the question, only you have to do. There is only one option. What is that you do? What is the question? X into root of 1 plus y is equal to minus y into root of 1 plus x. Right. So you have 1 plus y here. You have 1 plus y here. Maybe you need to manage it and solve it. So here, since you are expected to eliminate y, Okay, I'll tell you something. So now you have to square on both sides. That's the logic you use. Okay, so x square into 1 plus y is equal to y square into 1 plus x. Okay, it's going slightly lengthy, no? So 1 plus y is equal to plug it. You need to take this value, but still, you face a problem. What is it? You can't eliminate this. I'm just checking if I made any mistake in any one of the steps. Because had this two not been there, you could have solved the problem faster. The two is disturbing, actually. Right. But there should not be only one method to solve the problem. There should be more than one. So x divided by root of 1 plus x. So root of 1 plus x into 1 minus x into 1 by 2 root of 1 plus x. Correct only. Nothing wrong. Huh? So this 2 and this 2 are gone. No, not working, no? So 2 plus 2x minus x. So 2 plus x by 1 plus x the whole power for y is minus y dash into 2 plus y by 1 plus y the whole power 3 by But this y we can't eliminate. Unless you have a 2 plus y. Yeah, try to plug in and see. So 2 plus x divided by 1 plus x the whole power 3 by 2 is equal to minus y dash into 2 plus y divided by y square into 1 plus x divided by x square, the whole power 3 by 2. So this 1 plus x the whole power 3 by 2 and 1 plus x the whole power 3 by 2 get cancelled. So you have 2 plus x is equal to minus y dash into 2 plus y by y square into uh, 1 by x square power 3 by 2 is going to give me 1 by x cube. Correct? Uh? It's getting challenging. You can't do it. But this way you'll get stuck. Right? So that's why squaring and doing this may be a better option. Okay. So you just keep doing a try and alternate way and tell you. You just square on both the sides and then solve it.
what is given? We stick to root of one plus y is equal to negative of y into root of one plus x. Am I right? So when you square on both the sides, you will have x square into one plus y is equal to y square into one plus x. So you get to the other start with the shape. You took the you separated the x and y. So x square plus x square y is equal to y square plus x y square. So bring y square to the left hand side. X square minus y square is equal to x y square minus x square. Y. So it is going to be x minus y into x plus y is equal to x y into y minus x. Am I right? So x minus y and y minus x can get cancelled in this problem because x is not equal to y. Had they been equal, you should not cancel. But how many times will they get cancelled? They'll cancel minus one times. So you will have x plus y is equal to minus x. So how can I write it? x is equal to minus y into 1 plus x. This will go to the other side. Am I right? Okay. So y will be equal to minus x by 1 plus x. Let me call this as 1. Right. Now, this x plus y is equal to negative x by differentiate. What will you get? 1 plus y dash is equal to minus of x y dash plus y. Correct. So 1 plus y dash is equal to minus x y dash minus y. So I'm bringing this minus x y dash to the left and this 1 to the right. So y dash into 1 plus x is equal to minus of 1 plus y. Right. So y dash into, leave this 1 plus x as it is, negative of 1. What is y? Minus x by 1 plus x. So minus x divided by 1 plus x. When you take LCM, what will you get? Minus of 1 plus x minus x divided by 1 plus x. X and x are gone. So y dash into 1 plus x is minus 1 by 1 plus x. Take the 1 plus x to the x. This is we will differentiate it. We will get the same answer. Yeah, here you can directly apply u by u. But only thing is, this step is crucial. If you understand when you can cancel the step by step by, then you do it. When? X and Y are not. Okay. See, just to share the idea, the other thought I had in mind is X into root of 1 plus Y is equal to Y into root of 1 plus X is there. No. Wherever I see 1 plus something, I generally think of tan square. So what I thought is I put x is equal to tan square alpha and y is equal to tan square beta and then I try solve. Maybe you can try it that way also. Again, you have to eliminate tan square, uh, tan alpha and tan beta right in terms of x and y, you get another expression. Maybe you can write it this. Anybody wants to call it as Can I should I just hold on your own? It's a sixteenth amount. Sixteen, sorry. 
See how many of you saw it? Sixteen. Cos phi is equal to x into cos of e plus phi. You saw it. Got the answer. Okay. So what is it? We are supposed to put d dy by dx is equal to by sine. Okay. Cos phi derivative is minus sine by into y dash is equal to x into derivative of this is minus sine of a plus y into y dash plus cos of a plus y. So collect all the y dash terms. So y dash into x times sine of a plus y minus sine y is equal to cos of a plus y. See, by looking at the solution, if, if you come to this step, you will not be able to get cos square. Right. So by looking at the way uh, the expression they are expecting, the cos square of a plus y. Why don't you bring the cos of a plus y here, denominator, because only in u by v root it gets squared. So if I need cos square of a plus y in the problem, why don't you bring it to the denominator? Differentiate with respect to x only. This so one side will be x and the other side will be in terms of y. So do you understand? Cos y divided by cos of a plus y is x. Differentiate it directly. U by v. So cos of a plus y into minus sine. Then minus cos y into minus sine of a plus y. The whole divided by cos square of a plus y. And everything will give you a y dash. I'm assuming you understood this. Here is equal to 1 and the problem is 4. Cos square a plus y goes to the other side. This whole thing is sine of So sine a cos b minus cos a sine. Use that for we get sine a. Take it to the other side. Get that. Got it? So it is basically the numerator is sine of a plus y cos y minus cos of a plus y sine y. Basically, what is the sine of a minus b? Sine of a plus y minus y cancel the set of the of the sine of
How many more problems are left? Please, please. So there, yeah. so there'll be a problem which is based on mathematical induction that you can leave. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. The other one you can do that sign of A plus B or something will be there, no? That you can do. See, look at the seventeenth one. X is equal to A into cos T plus T sin T, and Y is. Sin t minus cos t r t cos t. So what are we supposed to prove? Hmm. Y double dash is equal to so what is Y double dash? Okay. So what is dy by dt? A into cos t minus the other minus of t sin t b cos t you need to apply the UV rule. Where you didn't apply. It's a variable, yeah. There's a constant you should not have. It's a variable. 
because y is a function of t, x is also a function of t. So you are basically solving using parametric, you are solving a parametric form. So maybe that is a mistake you will try and see if you don't get clear. So, so, I am not going to do dy by dx tan in Varda. So when you're doing d square y by dx square, you would have left it as secant square t, correct? Into dt by dx, I don't know. Because you're differentiating with respect to x. So dx by dt, yes, sir. that's the reverse of dt by dx. So that's why you should substitute it here, that will be the answer. What is dx by dt? So a into cos t, Minus of t into minus sin t minus cos t. So cos t getting added. Is it getting added? D by D by the t sin t cancel out. A B sign theta was no because here I am getting a different. Oh, sorry, this is just when I took the minus outside only. This cos q and cos q will get cancelled. So you will have A B sign t. So this is divided by A B. What is D H by A B? Are you getting A B cos t? Yes, sir. You got it. No. So D H by A B is A B cos t, na? But A B by D H will be. Ah. So by AT cos t more. But secant square t another. Actually, answer will be secant q t divided by AT. What is the answer given at the back? Secant q t by AT. Yeah. You got it, what? Oh, you got it? Ah. So those are online. Did you get it? Okay. See, one last problem I would like to help is Aditya, did you get the answer for the sign inverse problem? Got it, huh? That y is equal to sign inverse something. Sign inverse of 2x divided by 1 plus. That's an example. Problem. You got the answer for this? The problem is, uh, I saw in your note that if I wanted to, thought I'd solve this. So there is a question. Two power x. Uh, two power x. Two power x by one plus. Two power x plus one. Uh, okay. So this is basically sine inverse of, can I write it as two into two power x divided by Two into two power x divided by one plus two power x the whole square. Can I do this? Correct. So two power x, the what I do is I take it as tan theta. When I do this, I'll get sine inverse of two tan theta divided by one plus tan square theta. Correct. So what will be the answer? So this will be sine inverse of sine 2 theta. Then what will this be? This will be 2 theta. And this will be 2 times theta is tan inverse of 2x. Sorry, 2 power x. Correct. Then y dash will be equal to 2 is left as it is. What are the derivative of tan inverse? 1 by 1 plus x square. So 2 power x the whole square is 4 power x into derivative of 2 power x is 2 power x log 2. Freedom. So 2 we get multiplied with 2 power x as 2 power x plus 1 
divided by 1 plus 4 power x into log 2. So this will be the final answer. Put it Okay. So we'll wind up with this. And uh, example problems, I want you to solve it at home. Next class, any doubt, I'll give you first half an hour time to get the clarified. Post which I'll be starting applications of derivatives. First calculus, marks the right. So I heard that in your school they are starting matrices and determinants. It's very easy chapter. So you may not be dependent on me for that. But applications of derivatives are important. Okay. Uh, any other doubt? We'll wind up this. Those are all in any doubt? No, no, sir. Sir. Okay, then we'll wind up. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah.